Denmark wants to prevent parallel societies from emerging. To this end, the proportion of residents of non-Western origin in urban districts is to be limited to 30%. For a government led by social democrats in the middle of Europe, it is the wording that makes people sit up and take notice. Denmark announced this week that it would reduce the proportion of people of non-Western origin in residential areas of the country to 30% within 10 years. The government wants to start negotiations on this in Copenhagen immediately. This announcement goes far beyond a law passed three years ago that was supposed to limit the proportion of residents without a Western background to 50%. Even then, the aim was to prevent the emergence of parallel societies. Out with unemployed foreigners, purely with well-earning Danes, this is the denominator of what the Social Democratic Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen means when she speaks of polluted suburbs in this context. She avoids the term ghettos with which her right-wing liberal predecessor had disqualified these areas, but that is little more than linguistic, linguistic cosmetics. In doing so, she is responding to the growing resentment in the country about young people whose crime rate in these districts is significantly higher than elsewhere in the kingdom. Quite a few Danes are convinced that integration has failed. The tone of voice is often harsh in Denmark, where freedom of expression and freedom of the press are paramount. There is a widespread consensus that speaking free to your face is a human right, even if it hurts others. Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen makes use of this right and has already made use of widespread reservations. In doing so, she has succeeded above all in chasing votes from right-wing populists of the Danish People's Party. Their social democrats are firmly in the saddle currently a rarity in Europe. Unlike the latest brutal sounding statements, however, the Danish welfare state is, in international comparison, a generous carer for immigrants and asylum seekers. In return, however, it increasingly expects to integrate. It is required that migrant women should also work. Young women from this group now achieve an above average number of academic degrees. Rejected asylum seekers, on the other hand, are increasingly forced into exit camps, as they are called, often in former barracks, where their prospects are dim if their country of origin does not accept them. This is the downside of the otherwise caring welfare state, in which extreme poverty is rare, even in the suburbs that are now being targeted. These suburbs were once the pride of the Danish Social Democrats. But now our Scandinavian neighbors, when I speak as a German here, are also lacking inexpensive rental apartments. The prejudice that only unemployed foreigners live in these satellite towns in what they call Muslim parallel societies that generate crime prevents many apartment hunters from moving into those neighborhoods. And so, the government is trying to achieve a greater mix of these areas and is not squeamish in doing so. The instruments include resettlement and sometimes the conversion into housing cooperatives and property, even the demolition of individual blocks or the conversion into lower units. Above all, people of non-Western origin have to move out, whereby the legal criterion is officially not their ethnicity, but income and employment relationships. Criminal offenses are punished much more severely in this area if the perpetrator's membership in a gang is proven, threaten even tougher sanctions. For those affected by the resettlement, the forced relocation remains a bad experience, even if the Danish welfare state does not leave anyone on the street in the end. The criticism of the Prime Minister's often rustic rhetoric, a rhetoric uh, which is sometimes accompanied by a populist tone, is limited in Denmark. In this small country surrounded by large neighbors, an age-old deep-seated fear of foreign infiltration is widespread, with roots that go far back in history. 
This is one of the reasons why there is no outcry when there is talk of restricting non-Western residents or when the consumption of pork is cited as part of the national culture. Um, and don't mis misunderstand me. I, I know the general purpose of that one. What I don't agree with is the wording and the way um, with the, with the um, forced resettlement. But we are, have to think about when we build new houses, for example, we need indeed a mixture to prevent problems. We also um, made mistakes here in the 70s, especially um, when we built kind of ghettos. But now we have to have a look for a mixture in new areas we, we built, in, in uh, new municipalities we put up or stuff like that, or new boroughs we, we uh, built. One might not agree with the way it goes in Denmark. I don't because of the wording, uh, forced resettlement, stuff like that. Um, but I know um, the basic thought behind this. So with everything, you have to be, um, you have to differentiate. You really have to look into the details. You have to look what, what's behind this. Because what really is important for um, housing communities, for boroughs, uh, for cities, is a good mixture. And I don't mean the mixture by eth ethnicity. That's the point where I don't agree. Um, and with the wording, it is about ethnicity and not about the income. Doing this about the income is the right way. That's why we, for example, in my hometown, we have kind of a, a local law um, that we have a mixture in all new blocks that are built. 30% social housing, 30% that could be from the size social housing, but are not, and 30% um, free financed that, that are the more expensive flats. So in one block, you have th a mixture of thirds um, of incomes in the flats usually. It's not a very old one, it's only um, eight years old, but it's starting to work. And so I really do understand the thought behind all of this. If you leave out this ethnicity nonsense, um, as a basis for it, you need to get all the social groups together in a proper mixture to prevent the mistakes from the 70s. And that's where I agree with the Danish. But many people might not think that much about the um, wording. The it, It's quite racist um, what we get. The news I get here, I'm not living in Denmark, but I'm always giving you an outside view on everything, is... Um, some of this really sounds very racist to me. And I, I do like our neighbors. It's not, not about this. But the, to, to make, come to a conclusion, the, the basic thought behind it is correct. You need a, a proper mixture of social groups. Um, but leave out the racism stuff. And if you want to stay informed, please subscribe to my channel. Auf Wiedersehen.